Welcome back to The Breakfast. There's so much more that we have uh, to, you know, discuss this morning and uh, have a very, very interesting conversation on. The story and the news of the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songwolu, uh, going into isolation broke a few days ago. And it once again brought back the, you know, conversation about how well we truly are doing with regards COVID-19 management across the country. Earlier this morning, we also told you about 18 to 20 military officers that have uh, been, of course, um, Gone, have gone into isolation also. Um, we've invited this morning Professor Tumori Oyiwale to join us. He's a virologist, and so he'll be able to share expert information on this. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor Tumori. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Always. Is it safe to say we are now in the second phase and we might still not be testing enough? You are very correct on both points. Um, the unfortunate thing for us is that Okay, uh, the network situation has come up again. Uh, we will try, maybe switch to telephone in a bit, but um, we will keep talking until uh, he comes back on. Okay, uh, Prof, can you hear us now? Can you hear me? Okay, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying that you are, you are correct on both points. Uh, we have the surge and we don't know, we have the second wave, but we don't know how big it's going to be because we are laying a foundation on the faulty first wave. So sometimes it's difficult to know whether it is a continuation of what we had before or we are having a second wave. Because during the period, we have had the last two months, many states are not testing. Uh, our labs were not having reagents to test. So we don't really know whether those so-called drops were actual drops. And that's why I said it may be a continuation of what we have or of, 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 of fake data. We now have the second wave. Okay, but Prof, did, do you think that, you know, maybe we let down our guard um, a little too early with regards to uh, uh, management of the virus? You know, it seems like a, a, lot of, a lot of Nigerians are back on the streets, back in work, not maintaining social distancing. The government also has not, you know, f from what we can see, not been maybe strict enough with certain of their policies that would have helped. So have we let down our guard? And should this be scary? I, I want to say that at no time did we actually put up our guard. Even when we said we were locking down, We lock down, we'll open the market for half a day, we'll lock up, we'll open the church for another day. So we've never been that serious about, you know, properly controlling this disease as a mission, both at the government level and at the individual level. It's, it's, it's worrisome. Okay, I, um, I want to ask you about um, our access to uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccine. Uh, the NAVDAG DG um, said we're expecting about uh, 20, uh, for 20 million uh, people um, in the country. Um, that's from the uh, COVAX program. Um, Nigeria will need to procure from uh, whatever country else to, you know, complement the other uh, numbers. How prepared are you? Uh, how optimistic are you that we will get the needed dose on time? Well, for a country that is a consumer nation and depends on other people's activity. Uh, I'm not too sure we're prepared. Uh, look at other countries. They bought up the vaccines like months ahead of time. We're still negotiating in Nigeria. We're still with COVAX. We're still talking to Russia. We're talking to, uh, what's the name of the other group? UAE came two days ago. So we're still in the state of negotiating for what we need, while other countries have bought their own. And so other countries are totally using the thing. So we, we've never been prepared in this country. Let's, let's face the fact. Uh, we, we run after the, uh, what I call mad, medicine after death. That's what we do in this country. And, and, and you expect that we maybe mm -hmm. would start to do better, um, you know, because the figures seem to be increasing every day. Should this put everybody on their feet? Should this maybe also put the government on its feet to ensure that uh, we increase our level of testing and um, maybe also, in, you know, put in better or stricter policies to tackle the increase of uh, COVID-19 in Nigeria? That is the message we need to get out to our people. 
COVID is not, is not gone. It is still there and it is spreading. We see it daily. 791 was probably the, 796 was probably the highest figure. We had, we had it on Thursday last week. The number dropped to 645. Over the weekends, we normally have a little number because testing is not done that much on Sundays. By Monday to next week, we'll see these, these numbers rising. We've seen it all over the place. Governors are getting sick. Top military people are getting sick. You only hear those ones. When poor people like me get sick, you don't know. I, I can't even get the chance to get into the hospital. How many of our people, uh, how many military people do we have? How many people do we have in our population? How many of our people are getting sick? The problem is there. It's still there. And it's around the comma. And Christmas is coming. People are not listening. We must get that message out. Cover yourself up. All those who are interested in carols. This may be your last carol if you don't take time. Cover yourself up. Avoid the big, big uh, population of a uh, gathering of people. And obey those basic instructions. You are the one that COVID will kill, not the government, not the, not, not the other people. So it's our life. And we must get that message out to our people. The COVID is around and it's spreading and people are dying. All right. Please, let's get this message out to our people. Um, what, what, what more can the government do to get this information? Because um, people argue that there is fatigue with, um, um, I mean, adhering to uh, COVID-19 protocol and the announcement of a vaccine further amplified uh, people's uh, laxity when it comes to, uh, you know, adhering to this rule. What more in your thinking can the government do to amplify for the people the importance of sticking with the protocols? Uh the virus never gets fatigued, death never gets fatigued, so we cannot be fatigued because it's waiting for us. You know, so therefore, you can't talk about fatigue now because the, the, the enemy we have never rests. The issue of the vaccine, uh, which vaccine are we gotten? We are still negotiating. We don't even have the vaccine. We're not sure when we're going to get the vaccine. In another, maybe sometime early next year or something, middle of, I mean, first quarter of next year. What happens between that time? Many more people will die waiting for the vaccine. So protect yourself with what you have now. Not wait for the vaccine you don't have in your hand. All right, let, let's talk quickly about the um, reopening of isolation center. Sometime last week, uh, the PTF um, announced that all isolation centers should be reopened to admit uh, people. Why were, was it closed in the first instance? If you have idea on this, please share. And were we really out of the woods to necessitate these isolation centers being closed in the first instance? First, we're deceiving ourselves with figures that our, that our numbers were going down. Many people were not even going reporting to the hospital. And if you check the record of the NCDC, 75% of the cases that they said they had, they had no clue about where they came from. So if you don't have information about the positive, how are you going to trace them? That's the problem. We failed on all those aspects. We couldn't trace our positive work. Our results were not coming out on time. Those who were positive didn't know until 10 days or more after they got infected. So that, these are all the complications that made us to uh, we, uh, 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 sorry, to, to close down those isolation was, oh, we're not getting cases again. Everybody says there's no case. But then the, the thing is coming up now. We are reopening them because we're seeing these large numbers of cases. I mean, big, big cases are coming up. And I think the, the earlier we begin to realize that we can't close these things down until the whole problem is over. I mean, do you shut down a hospital because you don't have patients? No. You keep it there ready in case some problem ar arises. All right. Um, Professor Tomori, I, I want to speak, you know, also on, you know, and I remembered some time ago when we had an interview, I had asked you about lessons that we must learn and in what ways we must improve on our own level of medical research. And um, of course, you're a virologist. These are things that, you know, you have spent decades working on. Um, should we be begging for a vaccine as the giant of Africa? Should, do you expect or do you feel that there are certain things that we should have been able to achieve for ourselves, even if not, you know, be able, even if not necessarily, you know, uh, bringing up our own vaccine? But should we be doing better with regards to medical research today? Um, and second, if you, and this is not a political question, just, you know, if you were in a position of, um, Dr. Anthony Fauci, for example, in the U.S., what would you have suggested to the Nigerian government to start doing as early as a couple of months ago? 
Thank you very much for those questions. First of all, let me say one thing. The, it's not that Nigeria doesn't have talents. We have talents. It is that we don't have the environment for those talents to function. The people you are talking about in diaspora, many of them trained in the University of Calabar, trained in different places. Then they opted out and got to the better environment where they are now excelling. You cannot, you cannot have the carpenter who has no instrument to build a, a door for you. That's what is happening to us in Nigeria. We've neglected the environment for so long. And therefore, if I were in position of authorities to say a lot of the money that we're now spending, the one billion and things we are giving to states which you don't have anywhere they are, uh, how they are spending the money, will be put into creating the environment for us not to be a bigger nation. A nation that has a pride in itself would start planning now. This is the opportunity for us to say, we wasted all these 60 years of independence. Let's start with something. How much money do we have? How are we spending that money? Giving one billion to each state for which they can't account for is to me the one the, the, the wasted effort of resources of our country. If that 36 billion or whatever we gave to those states had been put into buying some vaccine, I would feel more comfortable or improving the research center. But then it is not a matter of you know, the research lab alone. It is the general environment. You cannot do research without electricity. You cannot do research without good water supply. So we as researchers also must also clamor for improvement of the environment that we are in. If there's no electricity, if there's no water, if I have to go and buy diesel to get my generator on, those, are, those things are affecting my research. And therefore we must go beyond our test tube and also get into the public and say, look, this is our country. This aspect, this aspect, this aspect must be improved if you have orderly development. And that's the way to get involved. All right. Uh, the research uh, cannot be taken out of the, uh, of the, of the system. You know, and that, that, I think this is one thing we as researchers must now get ourselves involved into the, I don't call it the politics, but the, the, the social development of our country. All right, Prof, I, I, have a, I have a two-prone question for you. The first one is with the um, reports that some of the cases, the new cases, are from people who came into the country. Should the government consider banning flights? That's on the one side. Then on the second hand of it, um, the federal government is advising uh, people to not travel during this period in order to reduce the spread um, of the virus. Um, what, do you subscribe to that advice? Should people um, stay put as against traveling out of fear of COVID-19? Thank you very much. Um, if you remember the case about, uh, I hope you are hearing me. You remember the, the number of cases we have, if you look at the figure, about 77 or eight, almost 80,000 cases we have came out of the 1,000 that came into the country. So even on that first day, February 27, that case came in, that banned transit into this country. We have been dealing with only one case that probably affect a few people. But over a thousand people have come in and they spread the disease. And we spread it amongst ourselves. So for me, if I, I would do a drastic thing, I would, for this period of this, whatever, I would stop all, I would stop all early entry into the country, you know, through the, the, the airline. I would, at least I'm not saying lock down the country. I'm saying entry into the country. I would stop it. That's number one. As for traveling, the, 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 the virus travels, goes around with me. That I'm the one that the vector that carries it around. If I stay put where I am and protect myself, it will not spread. Therefore, I agree there's no need for stay home. This is just the first Christmas you know, that you will not be travel. And this first new year, you will not travel. Stay home, my friend, and, 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 and save yourself. Otherwise, this may be your last chance of travel. You may travel it and then never come back, come, come back alive. There's more Christmases and New Year's to be spent in future. If there's only this one we're missing. But then Nigeria is not the only people. Remember in America when they had their, their what do you call it, the, the Thanksgiving. They advised them don't travel, but they still travel. And the numbers kept surging. We should learn from that. So if we travel during uh, 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 Christmas or New Year, we expect in January more cases to occur. And all, all those right. Christians and friends are also are going to carol services. Do your carol at your home. You can play your carol on record or something. That would be. That would be. I mean, we've. we've I'm, sorry, go ahead. Prof, I, I was just going to uh, say we've evolved to do all kinds of things via Zoom and Virtual. Skype these days. So, Christmas carol via Skype or Zoom is something a lot of persons will be happy to go with. I must thank you very much uh, for <laughs> joining us <laughs> on the breakfast this morning, and we wish you a lovely day ahead. Thank you, and you too.
Bye See you now. again, Prof. I always, hey, enjoy, uh, I always enjoy speaking to Professor. Trump. Yes, uh, always. he always uh, adds uh, something extra. I, I was I was thinking when he was talking about you know staying put for uh, the celebration. Um, some people, you look at it from two sides. One, people are tired of being alone. They want to be with their family. Mm -hmm. And then two, you think about the fact that uh, this year has been really draining on a lot of persons. So financially, a lot of persons might not have the capacity to um, back on these holidays. And then the third part would be that, I mean, what's a few more weeks to protect myself from these virus. These are the options you can consider um, well, when, when you, you when want to When you say to what's travel. a few more weeks, uh, it's not like the virus is going to end in a few weeks. It, there's no, no, to travel, no, yes, no, for the period the of traveling, yes. I'm talking They'll, about the Christmas and New Year celebration. You fine. could hold off um, on that. And we've become creative. Couples are getting married via Zoom. Via Zoom. Um, people are having parties. We now have Zoom parties. You can be in your house, have your bottle of wine by your side, and then you boogie down with your people. Like, so. like Professor Tomori uh, just said, the virus is not fatigued. Mm -mm. Um, the, mm -mm. You know, the infection is not fatigued in any way. Actually, it is even, you know, increasing in its numbers, and not just in Nigeria, across the world. Um, so it's, it's best, you know, that you advise yourself. Indeed. Um, do the things that are necessary to protect yourself. Do the things that are necessary to keep yourself and, you know, the, your family safe. Wear face masks. Maintain social distancing. Wash your hands. Stay at home if you can. It, it's, it's not rocket science. Stay at home if you can. Felicity right. would love to be closer to me this morning, but... Because of social distancing, you have to keep out of distance. In your dreams. And I'm lucky. <laughs> In your dreams. In your dreams. All right, we'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll be talking um, about the killing, I mean, the attack, rather, at the um, Katsina Government Secondary School. And hopefully, we'll be able to connect with our guests to have a robust conversation on the way forward. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.